Hello everyone and welcome to my first RKR tutorial. Today we're gonna learn how to rig a 3D model and use it in Spark AR. I'm gonna use Blender but the basics are pretty much the same in each 3D program. We want to get to a point where we have our model with bones. As you can see here I'm using the Spark AR face asset, the face mesh and it's important to use it so we can have a reference where we want the model to be. This is the end result of what we're gonna want to achieve today and just to show you the final stage of where we want to be with our model. Once we have the bones affecting our model, we can go ahead and proceed the work in Spark AR. So let's begin. So this is our 3D model from TurboSquid. It was made by Epic Center. So you can go ahead and look for freebie models at TurboSquid. You want to find a quick solution, you can find many cool models in there. So as you can see, the original size of the model is way bigger than our face mesh, but that's okay. We're just going to hide our face mesh for now. And we're going to deal with the sizing after we finish rigging the model. So let's go ahead and rig the model. We want to make sure our anchor point is in the center. Next thing, we're going to select our model, press shift A and select armature. You can see that by creating an armature, we have a first bone. By pressing R, we can rotate it, S to scale it. We're gonna go ahead and rig the petals. Once we're satisfied with this first bone, we can go ahead and hit tab to enter edit mode and make sure the, the little ball on the bone is highlighted and then we can extrude it by pressing E and continue to the second bone. Pressing G to move, R to rotate, and E again to extrude another bone. So we're gonna repeat these steps, trying to keep a small number of bones because later in Spark AR we want to work with as less bones as possible. So to continue to the other petals, I want to select the root, I'm gonna hide the model, select the root, extrude and continue the process. Once we're satisfied with the bone structure, we can go ahead to the next step to connect the bone structure with the model. To do so, we're gonna enter object mode with the tab key or from the drop down menu in the top left corner. We're now ready to parent our model to the armature. To do so, we're gonna select the object first and then we're gonna select the armature and we're gonna press Ctrl P to select with automatic weights. We now made the model a child of the armature. In most cases, this step is enough. To test it, we can go to pose mode, select a bone, press R to rotate or G to move.
We can see that the bones are affecting the model, therefore we are ready to export the model to Spark AR. But before we export, we want to adjust the size to fit to our face mesh. This promises us to have the right proportions when we import the model into Spark AR. So we're gonna make sure we're in object mode and we're gonna press A, make sure we don't select the face mesh and we're gonna scale it down. In case you can't zoom in any further, you can press Shift B and select an area that's gonna allow you to zoom in further. We're gonna adjust the scale, position and rotation to make it fit the way we want the model to look in our filter. Once we're satisfied, we can remove the face mesh and export our model. Go in File, Export, FBX and Export as FBX. Once the exporting process is done, we can import our model to Spark AR. We are now ready to import our rig 3D model to Spark AR. To do so, we're going to use the head decoration template. We want to go ahead and add our model into the Spark AR scene. And we want to delete the one here and add our rigged flower right instead. As you can see, we need to make some adjustments to the size and the position, but overall, it's pretty much in the dimensions that we can work with. In some cases, our model will be imported without the front textures. In this case, you want to go ahead to the material and make sure you have double-sided checked under the render options. I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the material to look a bit closer to a real flower. So once we have our flower set up by size, in position, we can start setting up the bones in the patch editor. To open the patch editor, we can press Ctrl, Alt and P or by the view menu, show hide patch editor. Most of the work in this project would be in the patch editor. As you can see here, there are already some patches, but we're only gonna use the face tracker patch. In case you're starting a blank project, you can add the face tracker to the patch editor by drag and drop. We're going to use the 3D rotation by unpacking the 3D rotation. And this is going to be the root of our flower physics. Coming with this project are three patch assets that I've created. Let's add them. For the Z rotation, the X rotation, and the Y rotation. We're going to use these to allow the head movements affect the bones. And we're going to use, and we're going to use a few bones from each petal to affect the movement. You'll find out that normally there is no need to use all of them because the ones in the bottom will affect the movement for the ones on the top. So for the first petal, I'm going to select the first two bones and I'm gonna add the 3D rotations to the patch. I've created these patches for enhanced control over the bones and we're gonna see exactly how we can use it right now. So to begin, we're gonna connect each axis to the correct patch, the X, the Y and the Z. That's leaving us with three empty values that we're going to fill in based on the information from the bone rotations. We're going to start from the Y rotation on the first bone. This means that we are going to affect the movement from the root of this petal based on the Y rotation. So we're going to copy the 3D rotation values. 
and paste into the Y root patch, connecting to the first bone. Then we're gonna do the same with the second bone on the X and the Z rotations. We're gonna connect them to an add patch and connect it to the second bone. As you can see now, the movement has begun, but it's still not exactly the way we want it. So in this case, we can double click on the patches and here we can see we have a multiply patch. We're going to change it from minus one to two. And we're going to do the same for the Y rotation. And the Z rotation. As you can see now, the movement is more natural and more fluent. And there we have a reacting petal based on the movement of the head. We're gonna repeat the steps for each of the other petals until we have full movement of the flower. We can copy these assets. Go ahead and import two other bones. Don't forget to change the values. Voila. Notice that here we don't need to go in the patches again because we copied them. So the current settings are correct for this project. And based on other things you do when using these patches, you can always go inside them and change the multiply value. Once we're done with this process, we're basically ready to finish the project. So we can test it. And as you can see, you have a fully rigged flower that reacts to the movement of the head. So thank you for watching. This project would be available in my Patreon. The patches will be also available in my Gumroad. You can find the links below. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram for more tutorials and filters. In the next video I'll be covering texture baking to learn how to make the model look more realistic and cool. Thanks for watching and see you next time.